Hey folks, in this episode, I'm going to be building a visualization using ChatGPT. Uh, so I'm going to be using ChatGPT to help like, as my co-pilot through building a visualization using Tableau. I'm going to be using a website here for games like this. It's a great community project full of all kind of games data set. That's where I'm going to be starting. And I've got a clock in the top right corner uh, just to keep an eye on all the things I'm doing, how long it actually is taking. Is it really that much faster? Let's go and see. Uh, so I've got ChatGPT here. I'm using ChatGPT4 and using that code interpreter. Was the code interpreter now advanced data analysis? I've got that plugin set up and I'm ready to go. So I've started the clock. We're now on to like games like this. I'm going for one of our recent challenges, uh, looking at it like competitive games and those kind of fighting games as well. So we've got all kinds of data sets here that I can pick and choose from. Now, actually here, I'm looking over these data sets, thinking what what appeals to me, what sounds fun, what, what do I think could be a fun visualization? And I found this one on Metacritic scores. So let's go for that. While well, that's downloading, I'm going to get ChatGPT all set up. Uh, so over on GitHub, I have made like a little prompting framework for ChatGPT. Uh, so in this first part, what we're doing here is adding in the visual vocabulary. So what the Financial Times here have done here, they've produced a list of different charts for different scenarios. I find this quite helpful for using with ChatGPT because then it actually gives them a bit better idea of what charts to use in different scenarios. Otherwise, it can be quite limited choices. You might find yourself just bar chart, bar chart, line chart. Um, I wanted a bit more variety there. So I'm using this framework here. I've also added in a prompting framework called Craft, which is all about uh, for me to relay information back to ChatGPT to really try and focus it down. Imagine ChatGPT has all that knowledge available in the world. I'm trying to focus it down to making about data visualizations and in particular good data visualizations. So what I've done here is given a framework uh, which will outline what the goal, what we're trying to achieve here, uh, what role I want ChatGPT to play, what I actually wanted to do. In this case, I want it to ingest data sets. I want it to analyze those data sets. I want it to craft compelling data stories. And I want it to help me like decide what charts to build, how I'm going to design the visualization. So entering all this kind of information to prepare ChatGPT for this task so it can be the best code pilot that I want it to be. So here, yes, I'm going through adding in now the data set as well. And what I'm just going to say, ask for it, hey, can you just, here's my data set, can you go and find me a story related to, hey, what what I'm trying to achieve here, what my target audience wants, and um, reference what I want you to do. So let's bring that out a bit more. Uh, and you can see here, actually, it's bringing out some quite interesting sort of types of analysis already. You see this little working prop, that's the uh, Python interpreter going through, working, doing that analysis. So here, uh, yeah, you can see here it's actually going through producing quite a lot of different analysis about like game, best games, games to avoid, trends, platforms, it's really nice stuff. Uh, now here I actually go and just challenge it, say what, what does the data quality look like? Is there anything I should be looking out for? Because I know there's, yeah, there is some missing data set, uh, data in there. I uh, didn't find any duplicates. Um, I found like columns were reasonably consistent. That's good. That's good checks to know. So here actually I decide uh, let's go and use, see if ChatGPT can do some data prep. So I have all those game titles, like I have Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 5. What I want is just Street Fighter as like, that's the game like brand or series. So here I've gone and it's gone and analyzed the data. It's found so many like common series in there using a bit of the Python interpreter. So I can see that Python code, but now what I want it to do I want to now go and add that data back into my actual data set because I want to use that in Tableau. Uh, so here it's actually gone and done it. I didn't think it could, but it's gone and given me a prompt. And now I can see that in Excel that it's gone and added in this extra column for the series. 
so I just wanted to check that this actually makes sense. There's captured everything. So I was looking for Super Smash Bros. and found this one, Super Smash Land. Uh, but this is actually like a fan game made, like inspired by Super Smash Bros. So in that case, I'm kind of okay that that one was missed. Next up, what I'm doing here is going back to that visual, FT's visual vocabulary and saying, hey, can you make me some charts here? What are some good charts that will show off this analysis? So here, yeah, it's going through those different stories, there's different pieces of analysis and saying, hey, here's three different charts you could have for each of these. Uh, but then I'm going to challenge it because I feel like uh, I, will, I like the analysis behind a scatter plot. Uh, this idea that could I plot sort of time, one axis time and another axis the ratings and whether that would help me see if games are getting better over time or not. Okay, so you saw there actually ChatGPT came back with a scatter plot so I can actually see this visualization before I put it into Tableau. Now I'm going to sort of, hey, can you go and actually write for me what this data story is going to look like? So it's using this framework of what so what, now what, which is quite a nice framework for fleshing out a story. Again, I've gone and done a little bit of data prep. I saw those platforms and they have all the different like console names. Like I don't, I want to know like who made it. Is it a Nintendo platform or is it a PlayStation platform? And I was really impressed. Like this is not too obvious for a machine to, doesn't have the word Nintendo in it, but it's been able to find these things. Uh, similar with PlayStation, it's been able to relate that to Sony. Uh, and now we're getting it to flesh out which chart for which story here as well. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I've got the data set all prepped up. I've got all these different stories. I've got all these different charts. I'm going to go start putting this into Tableau. I'm going to start seeing what this actually looks like as a chart. And I've, you can see I'm using this sort of principle of using ChatGPT on, on one side and then Tableau on the other. And so in this stage, I'm just going through, I'm just, just building out these different charts, sort of seeing what looks good to me, because at the end of the day, this is going to be my piece of work. I want to make sure this looks good and not just wholeheartedly believe that ChatGPT is going to produce the best, um, most interesting piece of work possible. It's got to still interest me at the end of the day. And so you can see, so working through some of these charts, I'm not too worried about the visual design at the moment. I'm just sort of getting a feel for the data. So yeah, you're going to see lots of different colors, lots of things that won't make it to the final edit here as well. Uh, and yeah. So yeah, so even in these sort of charts here, like at the moment, I've got all these different titles by the different consoles using the colors. And I can see there's not much in the way of cross platform. So the game doesn't really come out on different consoles very often. Okay, so what I've got now, I've got to a few sheets that I think are nice piece of analysis. I like the look of them. So now what I'm getting ChatGPT to do is go and recommend what the dashboard should look like. Uh, so I've built these individual charts, how I'm going to bring them all together. Uh, so this is kind of me just building out this starter dashboard that ChatGPT is going to recommend it for me. So it's got uh, this, this journey of iconic fighting games. So taking that series that we made early and then fleshing out what the top Metacritic scores are for that kind of building it out so oh well, one of the things I found here was it said oh this line chart should be in the middle it didn't really say where everything else should be around so I'm here just building it as it is and then I've got something to work with and I can move it on from there Yeah, and there's at this point that I look at this and I've had sort of a better idea. They want to say, hey, you remember like fighting games, you'd pick one character, you'd pick versus another character. Could I do that with these different game series? So get the user to pick, hey, you're going to pick Street Fighter versus like Super Smash Bros. Which is the better like fighting game according to Metacritic? So getting it to sort of redesign the dashboard along those lines. Does come up with some other stuff here. 
yeah so uh, so I've got this new design in mind and what I'm saying here is actually getting ChatGPT to write me the calculated field in Tableau so I've got this idea that I want to select these two different um, I want to select two different series but I want to keep all the rest there so sort of in context so the the user can still see those other series uh, so what I've found out here is it's tried to do uh, normal filters for this and obviously that won't work so if you filter for Super Smash Brothers then you filter for Street Fighter you're going to lose all the data uh, you can't have both uh, each row of your data is not going to be both of those things at the same time so what I've given it the recommendation can we do this with parameters and said so my user will insert a parameter like have a parameter to pick their different game series and so we're doing that here and I'm now getting those sheets to be updated to be colored by that whether that parameter is that that series or the other series or in the other case not so that'd be gray and so I've decided to evolve the build a little bit so I had those charts originally but what I decided to do I thought it'd be quite nice to include a table of results here so I'm building that out this section here, this is where I'm building out uh, the KPIs. So it asked me to give in some like, um, so it asked me to give some like key indicators, some top level numbers for any users coming in to introduce the work. So doing this and uh, looking back at this, uh, these take ages. Uh, I really do like think that this takes quite a lot of time like you can see the time I saw clicking along here I've really sped up the video here and even this like I'm trying to fit uh, these two KPIs for these different series here uh, side by side it's not quite working for me um, going back I'm shrinking the table down to say could it be a table for each that you could then compare across um, yeah and as there's this point like still messing about with these uh, with these KPIs and I kind of think like maybe if I'd taken some time and like sketch this out or worked that new idea through a bit more rather than just putting it into chat GPT and then working it through myself it might have saved me a little bit of time but I've got it at this stage and now I'm asking it more on the design side what colors am I going to do so I've used basically the default colors in Tableau here uh, I want to try and get like some engaging color palettes here so even here i can ask it about background colors for for this visualization in this case deep down i want to have a dark background so that's the that's the answer i want to see whether it's right or not so i'm going to go change this all into dark mode because uh, i think it will look nice for the look and feel of the visualization and then i need to go and change all those all the text over to like a whiter shade just so they stand out a bit more so here, uh, I even say I don't like the title. Uh, can we think of something better to do? Because I'm trying to compare these two fighting games. So there it gave me about 10 different ideas of what fighting game it could be. Uh, so there's a lot there I can go and choose from. So what I want to do is use those parameters. So the title updates when the user selects a different fighting game. Uh, and there's like, there's a nice one for me, like game on charting the rivalry of this versus this or something like that. Uh, you know, for me, uh, titles are hard. And this is one of the things I really like ChatGPT for. It does help with that. So you saw there, I've actually gone and switched uh, my KPIs over to be vertical, so one side to the other side, which I think, yeah, sticks with the final build. And so now I can actually see like how the visualizations are evolving to a much more of a longer form. Uh, so you start with your title, user inputs, those KPIs, and now getting these charts to be all colored in according to or what category or what parameter the user selected. And this is the next part, trying to size it all up. So there's a lot going on here with containers. I even try and do like these little subtitles as well to help break up the visualization into different chunks to be a bit more manageable for my audience. And this is looking good. It's looking good. Uh, yeah, I even tell ChatGPT thanks, coming coming on nicely and just asking it 
is there anything else I could do? Anything else to help me get this to the final stage? And here it gives me a long checklist of things that I could do uh, to improve this visualization. It can't see it at the moment. This was before we had the image recognition from ChatGPT, but uh, this is a good list of like different ideas. I mean, things that I personally wouldn't do, like the backup and version control here, I wouldn't do. Uh, here, I'm just focusing on getting tooltips sorted out, getting everything like consistent type font sizes. Yeah, yeah, just trying, this is the difficult thing, trying to size these things correctly. Uh, but I have this other issue I'm trying to work through of this, um, if you select the same game series twice, what does that look like? Uh, but there looks like, yeah, this is the first time I'm saving. Two and a half hours in, first time I'm hitting save. That's a, don't do that. Uh, but here I'm just checking to make sure that the online version looks the same as what I'm seeing on screen here in these interactions. You can see those images coming through with the image rolls in the table. Uh, yeah, this is looking good. I mean, yeah, I'm trying to size those tables up, but I, I don't think I get it all the way there. But yeah, and that's time. Uh, so that was my visualization using ChatGPT to guide me along. Uh, you know, it was a bit of a process. So I started off down one path, but then I quickly, when I got that into Tableau, I could see things evolving from there, depending on what I wanted to see, some of my own ideas. So I hope give, this gives you a bit of inspiration for how you can use ChatGPT we used the different like prompting frameworks to get ChatGPT up and running. You can check out all those in the description below. Uh, we then went out, got it to go and analyze that data set, go and prep that data set for us, go and check for data quality. Then we brought that into Tableau and started going through that different analysis, the different stories, sort of finding what we found worked for us. And then in the end, we built our dashboard, kind of personalized it a lot more than what ChatGPT wanted, but we were able to use ChatGPT to help guide us along there. So colors, titles, all this kind of design features were still quite helpful, quite useful along the way. Other than that, that's all for this episode. I will see you in the next one. Bye.